Okay, so a couple things to say before we dive into this one. First off, I really ought to buy an iron. I mean, the state of this shirt is just kind of crazy. I was looking at it when I was about to record. This is one creased up shirt, not a good look. Number two, I recorded this whole thing earlier and then realized the mic was off. Awesome. So you're getting the remastered version. You know when they release a, a DVD for a second time and you get like the remastered, more precise version. That's the one you're going to get. So it's Ali Reza Firuja playing with white. We've got Fabiano Caruana with black, a guy who's traditionally been a bit of a boogeyman for Ali Reza, especially in classical chess. And this is the play-in section for the Julius Baer Generation Cup. So it's another event as part of the Champions Chess Tour. Some players have already qualified, like Magnus, Hikaru, but some have got to try and play their way in, like Ali Reza, like Fabi, Nepo, Aronian. I mean, big names trying to qualify. Let's take a look at this one. Here we see C4, the English from Ali Reza, and Fabi sets up this kind of Queen's Gambit decline setup. Ali Reza fiend Kettling. We get these standard opening moves. D3, and now Fabi goes with this kind of modern approach, right? If in doubt, chuck your rook's pawn. It feels like the engines just never disapprove of, uh, approve of this stuff, I swear. You know, just gain the space. So we get knight c3 played, knight bd to, uh, b to d7, and now bishop f4 starts to put some pressure here, you know, knight b5 in the air, and so c6 looks really natural. But Fabi now, to his credit, just completely mixes up the game by going knight to h5. Because this is a pawn sacrifice, which Ali Reza duly accepts. So he takes here, Fabi chops the bishop pair, shatters the pawn structure, opens the white king. This is the compensation he's playing for. And after the pawn recaptures, Ali Reza snaps off that key central pawn. And Fabi just calmly carries on with bishop to d6. But there's no two ways about it. White is better here. Strong center. That bishop pair is not enough compensation for the central pawn that you've just given up as black. But okay, it's rapid play chess. You know, there is an open king now. Bishop pair. This is what Fabi's playing for in the long term. So he looks to centralize this knight in on that d5 square. Ali Reza pushes on with his extra pawn. And now a4 played, gaining some queenside space and starting this amazing rook lift, which we're gonna see in a moment. But first, what should Ali Reza have played here? Well, the top engine move is pawn to a3. You know, this is where guys like Magnus are just so good at finding the right pawn structures. I mean, maybe Magnus wouldn't have played a3, but you know, he's good in general at that kind of thing. And the idea is you take away b4 from the bishop or later a knight or something and you don't let black weaken these dark squares when you've got no dark squared bishop. But what we see in the game is queen c2, a bit casual, and now rook a5, rook a c1 and pawn to a3 induces b3 and creates that pawn structure just discussed a moment ago. So we see rook h5 swinging across the board. I mean, how about that for a maneuver, right? a8 to h5, awesome attacking stuff from Fabi. And now knight e2 from Ali Reza, very logical, looking for g3, kick the rook, add some defense. So we see knight d5 centralizing, the knight hits g3, the rook drops back. It looks kind of clumsy, but it's not so easy to get at that one there at the moment. And now I'm drawing some arrows on the board. You're gonna see a bit of that from where I did this on the first recording, right? But basically, Ali Reza, he just finds the wrong plan here. So he goes for this knight g5 to e4 maneuver, but actually the top move here was an immediate f5, which Ali Reza does play later, but this is the thing with chess, isn't it? It's all about timing, right? This knight's actually good on f3, covers h4, stops the queen from jumping out there. But here we see knight g5, now bishop e7, anticipates the knight coming to e4, also of course creates, whoops, creates this battery, threatens to win a, a pawn, you know, after the exchange there. And so after Ali Reza hops here, well now Fabi goes bishop b4, adding some awesome pressure down here, really controlling those rooks to some extent. And then the lines I was just drawing there, well, the best move now is to actually hop the knight back to g5, but not particularly human to do that, you know, come to the square you've just left. And the reason that's best, well, you stop queen h4. 
but what we see in the game is this F5 move was good earlier, but not here, as you see the eval bar react on the left. Because now, the queen can stream out to h4, threaten the pawn on h2, and after you go pawn h3, well now there's an awesome attacking move to start ripping open lines, bring more pieces into the game. Can you find the best move for black here? <clears throat> so, the move to play is pawn to g6, and Fabi finds it. Now, if you take, black doesn't even need to recapture straight away, as I'm drawing there, you can actually crash through immediately on h3, and even if white wins a second pawn, well, the attack rage is on down the h-file, plus the stuff like f5 in the air, so on and so forth, won't keep going with the line, you know, computer's giving it about minus 8 here, at depth 22, really bad. So we see knight c5 instead played by Ali Reza. Now he's cleared that knight out of the way, you know, the one that went on a bit of an awkward journey, just not the right plan, tough to find the right plans at times in rapid. He opens the queen, adds some defense here, etc. But Fabi now finds a nice tactical shot to cement an edge. Now the computer wants to immediately take this knight, sort of split up these central pawns for white, but Fabi starts with this one. He doesn't want to give up his bishops. Well done if you found that shot. So you're forking queen and rook, forces the pawn to recapture, but now the knight is loose on g3. The queen chops it off, but Ali Reza does now have a defensive resource since the f pawn cleared the way. Rook f3, going for a rook lift of his own, not quite so spectacular as this one, right? but kicking the queen out of the way, and now he doesn't play the best move, but it is a nice looking move. I mean, the computer wants f6 as the top move, but okay, he goes for this one now. There is adequate defense around this pawn, so he decides to take, open some lines to the black king. And now taking with the h pawn is the kind of standard recapture here. You're taught to capture towards the center when you're learning chess. This looks logical as well to keep a nice pawn structure. But what Fabi does is take with the rook, and this is the top move. And it makes some sense for sure because it carries on the initiative. You now pin the bishop, you're threatening this kind of stuff here. And so that's why Ali Reza plays queen to f2, offering the queen exchange, not allowing this bishop to yet take on h3. And as I'm indicating here, the best move for black was queen h6, keep those queen on, uh, queens on the board, second best queen e7, third best queen g5, principle being keep the queens you're the one attacking as black go for the king but fabi takes you know strange decision you can see the eval bar react it's coming closer to equality now whereas black did have an edge so the king recaptures and now king g7 played rook c4 threatens this one but fabi's definitely feeling a flow in this game and in this tournament because what does he play in response to this threat the really pretty bishop to e1 check. Because if the king captures, the rook takes this one here, you know, you've decoyed away from the defense, and you're now pressuring the pawn. And this is why Fabi was actually happy to get the queens off the board. So these were the following moves, is that when you've got this pawn on a3, it creates some really nasty end games if the pawn doesn't drop off. Because there could be ideas of this one disappearing at one point, or the bishop taking here, Pawn recaptures, pawn runs, you know, some end game thematic sacrifice ideas in the air. Now, the bishop just uh, hit h4, and the lines I was drawing there, well, it goes on this amazing kind of run around the board. So we get bishop a4, uh, rook a4, sorry, attacking the pawn, and now bishop e7. And this is where bishops are so good in comparison to knights. You know, they're very, very long range pieces. They can move around the board much quicker, and they're going to do better in a game where you've got pawns on both sides of the board compared to a knight. Now, the pawn attacked, you can actually take. Looks impossible because of pawn b6, knight moves, you lose the rook. But actually, there's the rook a7 counter shot, so taking the pawn could have maybe been possible. I mean, after the pawn drops, you're not forced to go b6. The computer says rook g8 keeps an advantage for uh, black or moving the king immediately, you know, getting pressure here. But okay, the pawn not dropped, the knight immediately retreats, now we get bishop d6, king f2, add some defense to the dark squares, rook e8 comes to the open file, knight f4, hits the rook on g6, 
Fabi doesn't want to give up his bishops, so he sidesteps with the rook, and now we get rook a8 from Ali Reza. So he's adding some pressure down here. He's also stopping bishop to f5, which is a big idea in the air for black. You know, imagine it coming down here and here, and you could be in some trouble. But you can't do that yet because the rook is loose. So the king steps back, defends that rook, and now e4 from Ali Reza. Really nice use of his central pawns. And running way back to earlier, you know, this is one of the reasons why the computer kind of wanted to take that knight here, shatter this pawn structure up before then going for this knight takes on e3 tactic because these ones can get dangerous in the center. Now you can't take that pawn with the rook or you lose the bishop with check. So we see bishop d7 instead. A pair of rooks come off the board. King recaptures, but still a good game for Fabi. Again, because of the fact that he's got this superior end game plus the bishops. So knight d3 played. Rook h4 hits that central pawn. King e3 defends and bishop e6 starts to pressure down here, looking at some of these thematic ideas to then push the a pawn. Plus, look at the times here. Both now basically under 30 seconds. We're in a bullet match or a bullet game. Who's your favourite in that one? Well, let's see what happens here because it's an awesome finish. So Rook F1 from Ali Reza, anticipating this kind of stuff and the A-pawn running. Now we get Bishop E7. Oh, and just running back a move, you can't win a pawn here as black because Rook H1, pin and win, that Rook's actually dropping off the board. But remember this moment for a later thing. So Bishop E7 played instead. Now Rook H1 from Ali Reza anyway. Bishop G5 check, King F2. This uh, Rook now comes to H6. And now we get Knight C5 played. So it hits the Bishop on E6, plus the Pawn on B7. The Bishop drops back. And now the pawn kicks on to e5. I'm just pausing actually suddenly because I've realized that you're not seeing the whoosh kind of thing behind the pieces as they move. And if we come back here, normally when the king is checked, you know, it goes that kind of sparkly color since they updated the UI. So I'm not exactly clear why all the effects aren't happening here. Maybe that's just in the analysis board. I don't know. I'm confused. I'm viewing it from the game view from the tournament. Anyway, we'll crack on. So e5 played, bishop e7 on the board, and the knight hops back into e4. Bishop e6 from Fabi. Again, there's some threats down here. We see rook c1 played, and actually, sorry, running back a move. So Ali Reza here, he just blinks. He goes wrong. He shouldn't move the rook from h1 because it does need to stay with this pawn. Now he goes rook c1 in the time pressure. You know, king g3, a better move. Black still with a small edge. But he plays rook c1, and actually this pawn now can be snapped off, which Fabi does, he spots the tactic. Because if you go rook h1 now to pin and win the rook, well actually you're not pinning and winning. Because the bishop can take on g2, and if you snap off this rook, well the problem is now your knight is loose, and these two bishops against rook are winning out the day. I mean white's not even winning this pawn. So you've got an outside passer running, plus the bishop pair, plus still the problems with these pawns. The king's going to come and sit here, etc. So we run it back. Ali Reza takes, rook recaptures, rook g1, desperate stuff from Ali Reza, hitting the open file, but check, and now again, Ali Reza doesn't play the best move, which he will have seen, you know, interposing with the rook, but the problem is, he enters this hopeless endgame, where this pawn's an outside passer, always going to hold up the king or the knight, the knight can't even hop in here, you know, it's dominated by the bishop in both directions, and the king's going to come up like this, as mentioned, awful end game, dead lost. So instead, the king steps up, allows this pawn to drop, but at least you get some checks, some king d7, some counterplay pieces. Rook a1 played, now rook a7, king c7 defends the pawn, knight c3 back, but bishop b4. Uh, pressures that knight that's covering this square, king d3, and Fabi simply chops that one off because this is hopeless. Ali Reza is about to get trousered. Now you're going to see what I mean, and I'll explain that phrase in just a moment. So king b8 played, the rook retreats, now pawn h5, and this is the problem. You've got two passers running down the board. So king c2, pawn h4, 
desperate stuff from Ali Reza now, pushing d5, opening his rook laterally. We get pawn h3, this one kicks on to e6, exchange, pawn recaptures, pawn h2, pawn e7. The black rook comes behind the pawn, and now rook h4 comes behind this one, a2. This one makes a queen, Ali Reza distracting that rook, desperate last ditch stuff to then go king b2 but rookie one finishes the game on the spot and this is where you can see Ali Reza's been trousered by Fabi I was about to say Dania no by Fabi but it was Dania Naroditsky talking about this one so apparently it's a Russian phrase he was saying I've never heard this metaphor before but where you've got the running pawns I mean a and h pawn in this scenario I guess you could have a and g or whatever um, but you've got two pawns running down and on the opposite flank, so these are like the bottoms of the trouser legs or pants as you'd say in the US, right? Uh, this is like the waistband up here. These are your trousers and because of the way the trouser legs are, you can't actually stop both of them from running, you know, with the pieces you've got left available. So a really cool metaphor. I like that one quite a lot. Anyway, so Ali Reza goes down, and these are the final standings, however. I know this isn't the best view, but clicking away, you should be able to see it. So Fabi, he actually won the event. Kudos to him. Great day at the office. Seven and a half out of nine. Ali Reza with seven, though. Here's a surprise. Pavel Eljanov, and then we've got Nepo bringing up fourth. Uh, Tabatai, he, uh, he had a great day at the office, actually. Really, really strong wins. Anyway, so I'm not, I can't remember how many qualify, but maybe top three, top four or something. I'm not sure. But okay, Fabi and Ali Reza are going to be there. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks as always for watching. Sorry, the mic, bring the mic back. And if you do want to see another game of Epic Chess, check out the video on screen. And I hope to see you again soon. Cheers.